Sometimes when we make epoxy waves, we want more of that crisp break line like how you would see on the beach. So I hope today this technique really helps you out with using just epoxy to create that look. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let's wake up, prep these tumblers and slay all day. Let's do this. starting off with our base I've already prepped this tumbler and now we just want to come through and do our spray paint so when I chose the colors I just kind of went with colors that I, I enjoy I really like gold coral kind of teal light teal colors and those are kind of beachy to me so that's why I kind of went with this so what I'm doing here is I'm spray painting what looks like is the bottom with the metallic gold but that's actually up around the rim area I have them flipped upside down when I spray paint so that way spray paint doesn't get inside of the tumbler. And then after I get my gold on, I'm gonna come through with a coral, and both of those were by Rust-Oleum. Now I'm going to do probably about a three inch portion of sand or sand look at the top. And then the coral, I'm gonna come through and do another three inches. And then the teal, I'm only going to leave just probably about an inch, maybe inch and a half of the teal at the very bottom. So that dry and then I came through and did it a second time to make sure that my ombre was nice and faded together. And now I'm just gonna let that dry before we move on to the next step. So now we're ready to get started on our first epoxy wave. I have about 20 milliliters of epoxy that I'm about to divvy up. I'm gonna divvy up about probably five mLs right into another container that's going to be for our breaking or the white area. So I'm just gonna put that into that container and kind of put that off to the side. Now I'm leaving the base just plain, but I did wanna add a little bit of, just a little bit of shimmer into the epoxy for the wave section. So I'm gonna add a little bit of bubbles right into my epoxy, not a whole bunch, just a little bit goes a long ways. And I'm also gonna add just a hint of Twilight Spritz. Now the glitters I'm using today, you can find at socglitters.com if you would like to. But I'm gonna show you guys here just a little bit. I just wanted just a hint. You know, you kind of look at it one way and you're like, oh, I seen a little bit of a sparkle. That's all I wanted. <laughs> So when getting started on your very first wave, I want you to think about how many waves you would like. I kind of wish I would have done three, but we're doing two today, okay? So I, if I would have done three, I would have came up a bit further with my first line here. But I, what I want you to do is take your epoxy and only apply it in the area you know you want your first wave to start. So you kind of see, I just made a line. I just kind of visualize it about where I want it to start. But other than that, I am not going to push it beyond that point up the up to the top of the tumbler i'm going to keep it from there down so again i'm just going to focus on making sure that i don't apply that epoxy up at the top i keep it right in that area and i want it kind of up and down you want it to kind of dip up and down because you want again to visualize those waves and what do waves do they kind of go up and down so it doesn't have to be a perfect line you you don't want it straight across you want it kind of fluid and, and up and down in areas and I'm also coming through and making sure that I cover the bottom really well. Again, just the whole bottom portion of the tumbler. Now once I have that bottom covered nicely is where I'm going to come in and finalize the line of where I want my waves to be around the top. So as you see, and I took just a bit more of my epoxy and I'm just taking my fingers and making sure it has a nice fluid line at the top. You don't want there to be too much breakage at the top. You want it to be pretty smooth so that way when we go to apply our white waves, it kind of has a nice settling up around the top. After that, I'll go ahead and place that onto my turner and I'm going to hit up just the area where the epoxy is at with my torch so that way I pop any little micro bubbles. Now I'm gonna take that little five ml cup that we had placed off to the side and I'm going to put a bit of a white acrylic paint right into it and stir that up really good. I'm gonna get that epoxy right to the edge of my cup so that way it comes out in one clean, smooth motion. And I'm going to place it right in front of where that clear epoxy is. You don't want it inside of it. It's okay if a little bit goes inside of it, but you mainly want it right in front of the clear epoxy. 
So I'm going to do one band right in front of the clear epoxy and then as I come through and do this second band, I'm going to make sure that it all connects because you do want it touching the clear, which will make more sense once we start to blow everything together. So I'm just going to go ahead and get as much as I would like to on there and then I'm going to I'm going to make sure that I save a little bit because we do want to come through and kind of adjust our breaking area a little bit more after everything's all said and done. So I'm just coming through and just kind of adjusting things here and there. Now I'm going to zoom in and slow it down so that way you guys can see it a little bit more is what I'm talking about. You just want it right at the very front. You don't really want too much of that clear leading in the very front. All you want is that white right in the very front. All right, now let's make that wave. I have my handy dandy blow dryer. And to really enforce that wave look, I took it completely off of my turner and I want to hold it completely upright. And then I am going to take my blow dryer here and I'm going to get those waves warmed up and have them start pushing down towards the bottom. And I'm just going to push them as far as I would like them to go. I really wanted them to be exaggerated and go as, as far as I possibly could get them. And it's absolutely okay if some of your epoxy drips off the bottom, you might need a silicone mat so that way you don't get your table all messed up. But, you know, I'll just wipe mine up later. <laughs> but um, it's okay that if the extra epoxy drips off the bottom, that's perfectly fine. And once I have it pushed down as far as I would like, I'm going to come through and rotate it and kind of push everything sideways to continue to make those cells that we really like because it makes it look more natural and foamy and beachy. I'll place that back onto my turner after I'm done doing that. And then I'm just going to come through one more time with a bit more of my white. This is why we saved a little bit of extra. And I'm going to do one more line up around the front just like we did beforehand. You want it kind of in front of the clear versus in the clear. After I do that one last line of extra foam around the top there, I just took my popsicle stick and just kind of filled in any little areas that just seemed like they need to be filled in. And just one last time, I'm going to very gently take my blow dryer and just kind of push that back up onto our waves just a little bit, just kind of blend everything together, and then I'm going to leave it alone. But if you do it in this fashion, you shouldn't have that kickback or that feathering we typically get when we try to epoxy the whole entire tumbler and then apply waves that way. It should stay nice and crisp, just like this. Now after, th after everything's all said and done and I let it kind of sit there and rotate, sometimes I will notice a bit of pulling start to accumulate around the bottom. We definitely don't want that so I will just take a gloved hand and I will either try to distribute it without messing up my waves or I will just take it and completely remove it and kind of wipe it onto a paper towel so that way we don't have that extraness at the bottom. Now we are just going to let that cure and then be ready to move on to the next step. Now after that cures, we want to go ahead and move on to giving the whole tumbler itself a coat of epoxy. I went ahead and I did seal where my glitter is because the glitter I'm using is such a big glitter and we're using such a thin amount of epoxy over top, sometimes it wants to wick away. So I just give it a, a spray seal or you can use your liquid sealer and put that down over top of the surface before you apply your epoxy. So after I fully coat that with my epoxy, I'm going to place that onto my turner. I'm going to hit it up really good with my torch, popping all those little micro bubbles. I'm going to set that off to the side and let that cure. And then while that's curing, we will go ahead and move on to our decals. I got this decal right off of Creative Fabrica. Super cute. I'll make sure to put it down in the description box for you guys if you'd like to use it. And the first thing I'm going to do is apply an offset. I did 0.069. I like it a little bit thicker on this. I Because of the cutouts that are in it, I didn't want too much of it kind of dipping in, if you know what I mean. So I just wanted a little bit thicker. Now before we move on to the next part, you want to completely highlight everything together and make sure it's the proper size that you want it to be because you don't want to mess with the sizing after you do this next part. So I wanted to kind of simulate the different colors in each word, just like the decal is here. So I went ahead and I went up to the upper right hand corner there and I pressed ungroup. Then I will simply come through and highlight each word individually and weld that together or connect it together so that way it stays all together when we go to cut it out on our mat. Now I like to cut mine out all on the same mat, but if you have them all different colors like this, it'll wanna put it on a different mat for each one. So what I do is I'll highlight everything together and I'll make it all one color so that way it's all on one mat. And then I just uh, arrange my vinyls and where, you know, which letter needs to be cut in what color. 
but here's what my matte looks like. So the offset will be the textured gold, sun will be the light pink, salt will be the teal, and sand will be the kind of magenta. Now the texture gold metallic does need to be put onto a different pressure because of the thickness of the vinyl. So after everything was all said and done, after the words were done, I just went ahead and, and rolled the mat back through on the proper setting. And now I'm just gonna get those cut out and we're ready to move on to the next step. So I like to layer my decals after I have it applied to the tumbler. It's just easier that way for me, but you guys can do it any way you feel is the best for you. I knew that I wanted my decal to be, or to look like it's kind of submerged in my last wave. So when I'm applying my decal, I just kind of think I visualize that and try to make sure that I get it down about to the area where I know my last wave is going to be. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish stacking up my decals here. Now, since this is the shortest wave I have on my tumbler, I didn't need as much as epoxy as I did for the first round. So I think I only did about 10, 15 mLs for this last wave. And of course, just like the first round, I'm going to section off just a little bit for the white caps. And again, I will just add a little dash of Twilight Spritz and just a little dash of bubbles as well. And then I'm going to get that mixed up. In working with our epoxy, just like we did in the first round, I'm going to make sure that I only apply the epoxy in the areas I know I want my waves to be. So in the back, I was a bit more dramatic. I brought my epoxy up a bit more. And when I got around to the front, I just kind of put it about halfway up my lettering. Not, not so much halfway, I, I didn't go too far up the lettering. You just wanna make sure that you, you don't go up too far so that way it doesn't w completely wash away <laughs> our quote. And again, after we get our wave all figured out there, we're gonna go ahead and place it onto our turner. We're gonna put a bit of acrylic white paint into that extra bit of epoxy we have saved off to the side. Then I'll try to make this line as straight as possible and I'll get that going right at the top right in front of our clear portion of epoxy just like we did before. And since this is my ending wave, I know this is going to be my last wave, I am going to come through and I'm just going to do a couple dashes of this colorant along the bottom and along the sides there. So you could even do this in the other waves that you do. I mean, it's completely up to you guys on how you want to do your waves. And then again, I'll go ahead and take that off my turner. And once I started getting going with my uh, blow dryer there, I realized I wanted to do the bottom up first before I got those main waves going. So I went ahead and hit up the bottom and then I'm going to take it and, and flip it completely down so that way I can push my waves down as far as I can take them. Now, after I got that going, I noticed that uh, it was starting to bulge at the bottom. So after I get it placed on, I'm gonna show you guys what I do to remove that extra epoxy. So again, trying not to disturb my waves too much, I'm just going to take it and pull it directly off and scrape it right back into my cup that I'm using for my waves. And just like the first set of waves, we're going to finish it up with one more line of that white epoxy mixture right along the front line here and just kind of fixing it up a little bit with my stick so that way it fills in any voids that might have occurred as I poured that down. And of course, after I'm done doing that, I will come through with my blow dryer one last time and just kind of push those waves up just a tad so they come up onto my lettering a little bit more and push it down a little bit more just so it kind of fades into each other and looks as one. And after that has cured, all that is left to do is fully coat it with epoxy two more times to give it its last finishing coats and she is good to go. Whether you take this design and duplicate it as is, or you take it and let it inspire you to create something that is completely your own, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun watching this tutorial today. Again, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys next time.